It's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Sometimes you go over the top rope and you bang your head on the ring apron. Don't do that. That's when you feel like a big dope. They're the worst bumps you can be taken. Oh, it's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Sometimes you reach out for the hot tag, but then you go ahead and make your own comeback. Knock it off. That's when you should quit wrestling. And you're better off rolling in thumbtacks. AEW, the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Okay, sometimes you're distracting the referee. And the baby face has your wrestler pinned. Then you get bumped to the ring apron. And you realize all the trouble you're in when it's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Now double claps. Here we go, Bob Squad. Episode 98, I think. It's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Bada ba da Whoa, Nelly. Oh my goodness, Bob Squad. What it is is what it is, and what I am is what I am, and what I am at the end of the day, like it or not, windows or draw. Cross your eyes and dot your T's. I know what I said. Anyway, a slice of just being the best Bob I can be, if you know what I mean, and I think that you don't. What are we talking about today? Well, I'll tell you. I'm not going to waste your time. I'm not a crazy person. I'm not a crazy person. We are talking about NXT from July 20th, 2021 on the USA Network, I think. It's on Sci-Fi next week. I think they're being preempted by tennis or a dog show or one of them goofy things. I don't know. It's, one, it's that time of year. And the show opens. Wait, it's on Hulu. It's on Hulu with not limited enough commercial interruption. It's on Hulu. And we open the show with Hulk Hogan slamming Andre the Giant. Did you know that? And then after Hulk Hogan slams Andre the Giant, I think The Rock says something and Austin says something. And I'm, I'm almost definitely sure there's got to be a clip of Shawn Michaels on the zip line at Mania 12. There's got to be. And uh, Bret Hart turning around or Sunday Undertaker. You hear his, 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 you see, you hear his bell, you hear his gong. And uh, that's the Cena probably. I, I, you know, there's stuff in there. That's what happens at the beginning of the show. That's a lot. That's a lot going on. That's a lot of stars. Ric Flair is wearing a pink robe with feathers in there. I decided to watch some more of it. I think Randy Savage is in there. I'm sure the Hulkster's in there. I, don't, I really don't remember. Anyway, after Hogan slams Andre, we open with Samoa Joe. He's very upset. Samoa Joe is not happy. He's, he's not a happy camper. He is not your average Joe. He's not even a G.I. Joe. What is he? Samoa Joe is angry because last week he was the referee for the championship contest and he was choked out by Karrion Cross. So he's been provoked. But the rules are unclear. The rules say Samoa Joe can retaliate physically if provoked, but doesn't say he can sit on it for a week. I think he, I think it would make sense he would have to be provoked and respond immediately in defense would, would be the logical. They really weren't clear on the rule. Like he, <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to harbor a grudge, but, but be that as it may. He's very upset, and William Regal is also upset at Joe being upset. And Regal, he storms to the ring, wipes his feet on the apron, which is the hardest part of it. And he says to Samoa Joe, I'm British, and I forgot what he said. But anyway, he's like, hey, you got to handle this peacefully. And Joe's like, I respect you, but I'm very angry. And then, uh, and then we go to commercial break. I don't remember what the commercials were for. It's not important right now. We have a uh, short one of those prepackaged promos with Xia Lee. They used to do a lot of these for Yo Shirai as well. I'm not trying to single out just, like, Asian people, but... But there are certain uh, wrestlers from other parts of the country. English is clearly not their first language. So they have subtitles and they put these packages together that are short, 20, 30 seconds. Just letting you know, hey, this person's an ass kicker. Which I think is, is makes sense. I'm not saying, you know, I mean, they should never say something here or there or say the bits and pieces that they can, like they kind of do what they've been doing with Asuka for so long. Just let her say her, her, her pieces. Um, Nakamura is another one. I wish there was another nationality or ethnicity so it doesn't look what says and sounds so weird. But yeah, I think you understand what I'm trying to say is that uh, help them out. If you're not going to have managers, do this then. So I like I like the Xia Li uh, hype up. Like, hey, this is Xia Li. This is why she's a threat. Which is difficult because, I mean, just flipping channels if you don't know these characters. Characters, I'm so sorry. If you don't know these wrestlers, eh. And you're flipping channels, you see Xia Li standing next to Raquel Gonzalez. It looks uh, quite mismatched. But um, they do what they can. 
Uh, more on that later when a match happens. The Diamond Mind is here, and they enter the ring, and the, the good guys jump them. Bobby Fish and Kushida are very upset with the Diamond Mind for reasons I don't understand, because I think something happened off Hulu in previous weeks. And then we go, we go to break, and we come back, and there's a tag match. Bobby Fish and Kushida is wrestling Roderick Strong, and the guy who isn't Roderick Strong. And they do their match, 17,000 stars. The match gets 17,000 stars. Please don't question the system. And Kushida taps out the guy who is not Roderick Strong. But clearly this is a Roderick Strong-based thing. Um, the Butler skit. Okay, they're in a parking lot in Cameron Grimes. Uh, do I have any opinions? Jesus, Bob, did you just say what happened? No. I don't know, it's too, it's hard to tell when when the stuff doesn't make Hulu for a while, and then one week it does, and I'm like, what the hell? And Zia Lee, who I already mentioned, and also the sister of Zia Brookside, both the daughter of, uh, both the daughters of Robbie Brookside. because uh, their name's Zia. Uh, the tag match was, I mean, it wasn't really memorable. It was, I didn't feel it was made a big enough deal uh, out of the fact that Fish and Strong are former Undisputed guys, and of the four guys from Undisputed, you have Cole and Kyle who just fought, and now Fish and Roderick. There's, I don't, I didn't really, unless I wasn't listening, but I thought I was listening, and I didn't hear much of that from the announcers. I think they're really just trying to move on from Undisputed, and you have to acknowledge it, obviously. I mean, you don't have to, but it's nice when they kind of acknowledge it just once or twice and move on. I'm like, eh, you know, they're clearly doing, it's been a while, so. Um... Interested to see where it goes. I mean, clearly, I mean, Roderick was not taking the fall, so that's good for the group. They have a manager who never says anything. I don't understand. Supposedly, people say he's really great, but I mean, I'm sure he is, but he's got to talk. It would be good. So who knows? Roderick Strong looks better with just the really short haircut, too. And are they going for Roderick and Kyle? Do you know? Does anyone know? I don't know, I don't know what the answer See where it goes, I guess. I mean, Kashida's really got nothing to do. I mean, I think Fish and uh, and Roderick is the real story there, and I hope that's where the, the match they're headed towards. Who knows? Uh, Kyle O'Reilly. Oh, wait, oh, wait, we gotta go to the Butler thing. Cameron Grimes is getting the bags out of the trunk for LA Knight, and this sets up the match for later. And there's a lot of bags, and Drake Maverick is British, and he offers to help Cameron Grimes and Knight yells at them and says, hey, the butler's got to do it himself, and yada, yada, yada. And then L.A. Knight, of course, says Jake to Drake Maverick, hey, I decided we're having a match. I'm, you know, this is very Monday Night Raw-ish and SmackDown-ish of them, um, but they don't do it that much, so I kind of give it a pass when they do it, of the NXT wrestlers just making a match. Like, what was the plan for the show if they hadn't decided to do that? And what gives them the authority to make that match? I don't understand that, those things. Um, but they don't do it much on NXT, so I kind of just, like, all right, I'll give it a pass. Anyway, LA Knight's very mad at Drake Maverick's trying to help his butler, Cameron Grimes, with his bags. So it's going to be Knight and Drake later on. Kyle O'Reilly wrestles Austin Theory. This is great. This is great. The match of the night. Um, I mean, it would easily be the main event, uh, if not for the fact that the women's match was a, a championship match. But Kyle and Austin have their, their thing. Um... Again, look like both. This is the the strongest they've made Austin look so far, and it, it looked competitive. Not just competitive in the sense that it's a 50-50 match, because I don't think all matches should be 50-50. I don't think that's... Modern fans seems to want that every match to be 50-50 and long. Like, that's not good, because then nothing means anything. When it, ha when it does, when you do have a long 50-50 match, you're going to forget about it, because it blended in with all the others. But anyway, uh, when this is... Making Austin look pretty good and confident and a little less meatheadish and dumb. But I, the announcers had to step in here and explain this. So I guess when uh, when Austin Theory picks up the steps, it's supposed to remind Kyle O'Reilly of what Adam Cole did to him on the steps. So Kyle snaps a bit and goes crazy with kicks in Austin. And he, he starts beating the crap out of him and does the knee off the top onto a leg and a submission. And Austin loses the match. Okay. A uh, little thing in this match I really liked. Uh, a little heelish thing. Austin has uh, Kyle O'Reilly. Are you yawning, sir? Yeah, yeah. It's exciting stuff. <laughs> uh, Kyle is in an armbar. 
And Austin takes a second and just kind of grabs Kyle's ear and kind of pulls on the referee says, hey, you can't do that. And Austin lets go real quick and says, all right, all right, all right. But it's really quick. You blink, you miss it. But it's those little things that remind you there are rules. And Austin does not want to get disqualified because he wants to win this match. But he was seeing what he could get away with. But then finding out the referee is really in charge. So a uh, very, very small thing. You blink, you miss it. But I love that. Uh, what else? The announcers need to explain this stuff. Thing. Yeah, so they had Kyle hold his hold, his leg, grapevine, whatever it was, on uh, Austin for a bit after the bell. And they didn't do that retroactive DQ thing they did with they do with wrestlers sometimes when they do that. That was my knuckles cracking if you heard that. But the referee just did. He raised Kyle's hand, just looked annoyed by him. But I usually don't like that stuff, especially with the faces. But the face did let go and listen to the referee's count. He didn't hold on for days. It was just a couple of seconds for the you know. So it was like okay, they're trying to. Kyle needed the win. Austin Theory did not need this win. The win would have actually hurt Austin Theory and Kyle. So Kyle definitely needed to win this match. Austin needed to lose to go where he's got to go. Um, yeah, it would have been really bad for Kyle if he lost this match. So I see what they're trying to do, build up Kyle's edge. And they kept saying go to that place, which is very Randy Orton-ish, which is, I don't know, it's a little hokey, but I'll let it go. This match is very good. match gets... Um, 18,000 stars for the match gets. Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai are talking to a blonde lady, and uh, they're going to beat Zia Lee, Raquel is. And a little seed planted, once again, a little seed planted, and Raquel walks away and says, uh, and after Zia, there's nobody left. And Dakota for makes a little face, just a brief little face of kind of frustration for a second, but then it's like, just enough. It's... it's it's NXT is much better at hey there's Vince McMahon is not big on subtlety and uh, I think after the Mega Powers feud for that year all of the subtlety we could possibly do <laughs> is thrown out the window all the subtlety cards we can play but viewers like to feel like they found something they weren't supposed to find or see something they weren't supposed to see and I, I think makes the viewer point to their brain with their finger pointing to their skull like every indie wrestling bad guy who thinks he thought of that. And uh, go, look at me, I'm the smart one, I caught that. And But the announce, but they never acknowledge it. Announcers never acknowledge it. The announcers never... If it was raw, they, the announcers would spend three minutes going, did you see the face that she made for the... I go, okay. Here, just don't... No. Siley's challenging for the championship. That's the story. And if you saw it, good for you. And if you haven't been seeing it, don't worry. There will be a package showing you all of them so you can retroactively go, oh, my God, they've been at this for months. That's great. That's good stuff. I have no, I have no complaints right now. I'm not in a complaining mood. I have nothing to complain about. I'm a very nice man, I think. Right, Chris? Right, Mark? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Oh, shit. There's an advertisement for... Uh, I'm, I'm giddy. I'm giddy today, gentlemen. <laughs> And for all the ladies listening to this, <laughs> lol. Okay, August twenty second. It's a Sunday. There is a takeover. They're talking about so that'll be interesting. Um. Oh, the way, way. Johnny Gargamel is backstage with Candice LeRae and uh, Indy Hartwell and Austin Theory. They're all backstage, and they're all fighting about all their losses. The the two women lost the tag. Uh, titles, the uh, Gargamel, Gargano lost the, uh, the match with Cross. Austin Theory just lost a second ago, and Canis is getting on Austin's case. Maybe don't pick fights with people. I don't remember him picking a fight with Kyle. Maybe I missed something. Uh, I just forgot. I guess he picked a fight with Kyle or something and lost it. Gargano lost, and they lost their things. And Indy Harwell had this great line, and I, I know it's not PC to make the joke that someone might be gay and that's the joke. I know it's not cool, but it was, I didn't expect it. It was out of nowhere and it's, it made it funny because, you know, Indy Harwell's had the thing with Dexter Loomis and, uh, and she says, Hey, you know, she's defending, Hey, don't pick on Austin theory, uh, for losing that match. If he wants to kiss Dexter Loomis, that's his business. And Austin just made the what face. And they all kind of stared at her and got weird for a second. And again, I know the the notion that someone imp implying someone might be gay is not 
good for a joke anymore. The 80s and 90s are over. But with that said, it was out of nowhere. And Austin Theory didn't sell it. Like, ew, gross, that would be so the worst thing you could ever suggest. Blah, 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 blah. Not like the movie Heathers, where they set up the two jocks. <laughs> okay, yeah, enough. You can check out that bonus 1988 movie clip on the Beachtown channel. If you want. Um, but no, this was just him being confused. Like, what the hell are you talking about? This is, we're talking about me losing a match. So they, he didn't sell it like, ew, gay is gross. He just uh, sold it like, I, with the, this, you're the one clearly kissing Dexter Loomis. This, so it was fine. That's what, that's what I say. Apparently I'm allowed to, uh, speak for this giant community I'm not even part of, but, um, <laughs> there might be women over here if I didn't have Ram Man sitting on a computer. Be that as it may. <laughs> uh, it was a funny but tasteful way. To, it was the, the right way to do it, and I spent way too much time on this, but I think it was uh, a good call, and I like how they did it. I don't think they handled it uh, with disrespect at all. I think they handled it as indie, you're crazy. But that is really what they were trying to get at. Samoa Joe's talking to William Regal again. Uh, I don't even remember this. I guess they were backstage or something. I should mention that they did acknowledge when Joe and Regal first had their segment up top. Joe, and I, and this is what's smart about NXT, they mention it once just because you cannot mention it. They mentioned Karrion Cross's match on Raw really quick. I think it was it was a field trip. That was the phrase Joe said. You didn't even know. You're not in control of him. You didn't even know about his little field trip to Raw. Like, And that's it. Just so they can say, yes, we know. We're not pretending he wasn't just on Raw. They didn't go on about him losing to Jeff Hardy with Jeff's feet on the ropes in four minutes or whatever the hell it was, but whatever. They said, yes, we know. Anyway, move on. For this show, it's not that important, really. We're just going to use that as an example of carrying doing whatever he want, wants, and it's not cool. So, very good. Uh, there's some guy named Andre Chase gets body slammed by Hulk Hogan. No, no, no. Andre Chase is just some dude. Oh, he wrestles Odyssey Jones. So both these guys are new um, new to WWE or new to NXT wrestling. They train at the PC, which stands for politically correct. Stands for personal computer. No, it stands for the Performance Center. So these are usually indie wrestlers who've been around for a little bit. But they're in this developmental system. Uh, but this um, it used to be that NXT was a developmental system, but now it's, things have changed. Odyssey Jones is this, this big bastard. He's 400 pounds. Uh, he's really built like Bronson Reed. He does not move like Bronson Reed. He's a, he was a, I thought he was a little clumsy and sloppy. I'm willing to give him a second chance. He does beat this Andre Chase guy who is a smaller, uh, thinner, kind of basic, slightly cocky bad guy. Nothing, No real story to tell there. I don't remember where Andre Chase was from. Australia? I don't fucking know. Made that up. Odyssey Jones, I believe, was Jamaican. He had the red, yellow, and green. In that order, I believe, the Jamaican flag, if I stand corrected. Um, probably not even close. Uh, or is Jamaican colors different from the Rasta colors? Oh, Jesus, whatever. I don't know the difference anymore. I barely talked my way out of that gay thing with Dexter Loomis. <laughs> Uh, Odyssey wins the thing. Nothing, uh, no real story to tell here. Oh my goodness, the best finish of the night comes next when LA Knight wrestles Drake or Drake Maverick. What, uh, so the, the gimmick here is Grimes still has to be his butler for an indisclosed amount of time. They haven't told us how much time Grimes has to be the butler for. Is it 30 days or the 30 days sounds good? Like when this is when the gimmick gets old or whatever. I think it would be great if. LA Knight bosses Grimes around and forgets that the day is up or whatever, and then Grimes can finally fight back and kick his ass. Um, <laughs> not that LA Knight has looked good during this Butler thing. He loses all of these skits in the end. So he wrestles Drake. He beats up Drake pretty good, as he should, and he keeps telling Grimes, hold the belt in the air with a million-dollar championship. Can they call it a belt? Because it's not a championship. Are they? I forget what they called it. But anyway, he tells Grimes, hold the belt up in the air, and Grimes keeps playing with the crowd and kind of doing it for two seconds, but forgetting and doing whatever he does. People love Grimes here. Um, and this is such a, a... I loved this finish. I laughed out loud, and I never do. Uh, Drake leans through the top two ropes over the ring apron, which is the hardest part of the ring. And... Uh, What's his face? Grimes is holding the... He says, hold the belt in the air like this. 
So Grimes has the belt in the air. He's facing Knight, and he has the belt in the air with both hands, like John Cusack and Say Anything, I think, with the, the stereo. No, I'm not watching that movie. <laughs> Damn it, now I'm going to end up watching it. And Drake drop kicks LA Knight in the butt, basically, and LA Knight bounces his head off of the belt and falls backwards into a pin, and Drake gets the pin. I'm like, that is perfect. And I'm like the biggest LA Knight fan, and I'm like, yep, that's the finish. Gil's got to lose. My favorites have to lose. It's okay. It's going to happen. And, of course, LA Knight stomps the crap out of him, and they do a, this big production where he says, Grimes, you now you're my butler, you stomp him. And Grimes says, to hell with it, I'm not doing that. He walks off. I'm like, okay, good. Good, 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 good. We'll leave the baby face. At least leave him with some dignity. Leave him his integrity. Uh, but then L.A. Knight says, no, 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 no. You know, you're a man of your word. You said you'd be my butler. And I don't know in what world your butler has to kick people for you. But he says, you got to punch Drake in the mouth. And eventually Grimes reluctantly does it. And then checks on him as L.A. Knight's like, no, you come with me, blah, blah, blah. And they, they kind of faded to black from there. This stuff's great. I'm enjoying it. I'm having a good time. Is it a little okay? It's it is very wrestling, but hey, it's a wrestling show. Yeah. Let's move on to the main event in the last two segments. Zia Lee wrestles or Kel Gonzalez. We have two heels. What are we supposed to do? Anyway, Zaya gets shoved around and she's fighting not just for her, but on behalf of her sister Zaya Brookside. And she wraps Raquel's leg around the ring post several times to work the leg on the bigger wrestler. That makes sense. We go to break. We come back. Uh, well, this clearly got cut short. So there was an injury. Uh, Raquel did like a splash off the second rope and kind of landed on Zaya's ribs with her back. And Zaya got hurt. She, she clearly had trouble breathing. And they had the doctors. And you see Dakota with a concerned look. And then Raquel just, just waiting and just yelling gibberish like, get up, you know, whatever. Just kind of stalling and stalling and stalling. I have no, I don't think NXT is a live show. I really don't. But it might be a live to tape with very little window to edit. I'm not really sure. But anyway, eventually I gets up. And it turns out she was all right. Because there was a little bit of a scare on the interwebs. And then, uh, and then a, a not scare. Like, hey, it turns out she's all right. But she had a little trouble breathing. She got hit pretty good. Um, and she basically, and this was the best way to handle it, I think. As long as I can can take a thing as long as she doesn't need to go to a local medical facility lol i hate that uh as long as she doesn't need to go to a hospital right now she's got one bump in her and she just basically got up and walked into raquel's finish the booby slam watch it don't don't be mad at me it's the booby slam i don't think she could do it to, to elvira mistress of the dark though that would be difficult but uh jesus well, the film exploited her worse than any nonsense that could come out of my mouth so don't be mad at me for that Booby slam on Zaya, one, two, three, match gets 15 billion stars. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. Gry uh, Drake and Knight got um, uh, six stars. Don't question the system, please. Did I miss anything? I don't know. Kyle and Austin, I probably made something up for that. Have you figured out the star system is bullshit on this show yet? Okay. Uh, so Zaya Lee is okay, which is good. Uh, still a little hard to get into with two heels. But not much else to tell here. I'm glad they had a finish to the match. I mean, obviously, we're still planting those little seeds for Dakota and Raquel. And as they walk up the ramp, Joe comes out. He brushes past them, and he's yelling for Karrion Cross. And we see Karrion Cross on the screen, and I should have known better. I, I don't know why. I, I, I don't like that. When someone calls out someone, and then they're on the screen, I just feel like we've done it thousands of times since the Attitude Era, which is 23-something years ago. It's over. Not do that anymore. But anyway, he's got an unconscious Regal. We don't see what happened to Regal. He's got Regal on the ground, and I think it's raining because it looked like there was a flash of thunder in the back, which how perfect is that? Definitely use it, especially for Carrying Cross. But Joe runs out, and he screams, and Carrying Cross drives away. I did not see Scarlet. Was she in the passenger seat? I don't I don't think she was. Maybe she was, not I missed it. Was she even on this show? Or was she just in, obviously, in replays of previous stuff? I really don't recall. If she was on this show, yeah, I, mean, I mean, she got all dolled up to be on screen for a second and a half because I didn't see her at all. Uh, not to say I could be wrong. Maybe she was on it, but I don't think she talked. I, I'd remember that. Anyway, uh, doesn't look good. I don't like it. Joe is yelling for cross-cross drives away. William Regal is hurt. Joe doesn't seem to... 
You think he like he would do the thing? He chases off the bad guy, or the bad guy just just drove away. So nothing he can do, and then he run, runs to Regal. No, he just keeps screaming at the car that's long gone, and we I mean, went off the air. So. That was NXT. This is a good program. This is a good program. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. Uh, it went quick. So, uh, Jesus, I'm having trouble goofing on these shows in the last couple of weeks, guys. It's nothing to be mad about. It's nothing to goof about. There will be. Well, there will be. Well, ugh, sitting up in my chair. I'm glad you enjoy. I hope you enjoyed the fun boxing of Ram Man and the uh, latest Beach Town episode and the bonus clip and all that stuff. So we're working hard to bring you more of that. The audio versions of all of those, if you God help you, if you need to relive those, but not look at us, we understand those. Those will be up soon. So I think I fixed that issue with Potomatic. I really have no other news. Um, over the weekend, I want to record something for the hundredth episode, because in theory, next Monday's Raw should be ninety nine, and the next and next week's NXT would be a hundred. I don't want to just have episode one hundred be an NXT thing. So I think you're just going to get, I'll record one over the weekend, save it, and you'll be bombarded with three of these. <laughs> I'll do the very best I can to make them all entertaining. In the meantime, be careful. I know. People are eager. They want to get out and walk around. They're sick of the mask. Uh, maybe they're vaccinated, maybe they're not vaccinated, maybe they haven't had a chance to get vaccinated yet. But be very careful, because you never know. When you're yelling at someone and they yell back and you don't know the spit is flying, the spit can hit you in the face, or the spit can miss you. The referee that you're yelling at can, can, can spit at you but miss you. And you know where that spit lands? It lands right where you're standing, which is the ring apron. Which is the hardest part of the ring. It's the hardest part of the ring. Ba -da -ba -da.